Grayson Grunhafer. Garrett, jump in if you have questions here uh, from across the room. Uh, Grayson, Baylor last night um, gets Michael Turner Jr., a four-star running back, and they are... I mean, I, I know that, that like this class is not done yet in 2025, but um, and in this just in the wake of last week, Dave Aranda just saying to us, "Hey, we're paying players." Uh, clearly, the adjustments have worked uh, for this staff in the way that they're approaching NIL and recruiting. Because I don't know of a week, just an individual week, that they've ever had in recruiting, even at their highest times, that was as good as the one that they've just had. Right. I can definitely see that. I mean, I would almost say, you know, the last really month has been probably the best month in Baylor recruiting history. Um, it's been fantastic. And I mean, obviously, since July started, um, things have even, you know, progressed more. Um, so if you want to shrink it down to two weeks, that makes sense as well. Um, you know, you're right. You know, adding Taz Williams and uh, Michael Turner this past week has been huge. Um, also, let's not forget, you know, the domino effect that happened when uh, Kamarian Morgan gave his pledge uh, on the 7th. And that kind of started this trend, right? And then Taz, you know, started gaining more interest for Baylor. He ends up committing. And then Michael Turner decides, you know, he's been waiting a while, kind of taking his time with his recruitment. And then he decides to go ahead and and make his decision as well. So there's definitely been a lot of momentum, and I, I think you're feeling that, right? You're feeling this recruiting momentum and, and feeling that, you know, they're in on these really, really, uh, you know, blue-chip type guys. And, and so I think it's a big deal. I would also say, you know, I think people overlook what happened in the transfer portal, and I know it's very easy to do that and very easy to point to, oh, what's happened the last two weeks that's allowed Baylor to get to this point, but – Honestly, it's been happening since the end of the season. I mean, the adjustments were made right at the end of the year. It allowed them to be much more competitive in the transfer portal and get higher-end guys. Um, I think it's a little bit hard to know that because, you know, these guys that are transfers don't really post all their offers, don't really – you know, they're not super vocal about, you know, who's recruiting them that often. And so I think it kind of goes under the rug a little bit. But once you start seeing it with high school guys where you're seeing the offer list, you're seeing the ranking, um, you're seeing, you know, the production, how they would fit in, I think it becomes much more apparent, you know, to, to fans that, you know, there's been a huge shift um, for Baylor and Dave Veranda when it comes to NIL and just recruiting in general. Grayson, we knew that the receiver position was going to be an area where they recruited hard this season with all the turnover they're going to have down the future. But when you look at the caliber of player they're bringing in at this position uh, specifically, how much of that is reflective of having an offense, the uh, the style that Jake Spavital runs compared to the one they used to have where you could actually see explosive plays being made down the field on a consistent basis and guys actually want to be a part of that? It's huge, right? I, I think that you know, when you look at kind of how the wide zone worked, it was a lot of, you know, running the football, being asked to block a lot, and then really just getting your opportunities in play action. Um, there weren't a ton of shots, you know, you know, in game. I, I think with Blake Shapin, there were more, um, but it still wasn't the level that it's going to be at. And, and you also got to remember, you know, Baylor was running out, you know, tight ends a ton uh, in the previous system. And now, you know, you might have a tight end out there, but a lot of the time you're going to have, you know, four wide receivers in your sets and in your formation, sometimes even five. And so I think that's really intriguing. I think you mentioned the fact that, you know, they definitely needed guys in their room going into next year. I think that, that's been very appealing. I think the prospects, just this sense of, hey, if I come in there and, and really show who I am and what I'm about, I could play as a true freshman. And I think that's definitely played um, very, very well. I also think, you know, when you're shifting offenses, you're really able to say, you know, hey, maybe this guy doesn't necessarily fit what we're trying to do. Maybe a guy on the current roster. And then you're able to tell this guy, like, you fit exactly what we're trying to do as an offense. And you can kind of use that as well as a recruiting tool. Um, and I think, you know, the guys that they've landed really fill, in my eyes, needs that they had uh, on their roster going into next year, you know, after this season, which is the biggest thing, and I know we're going to talk about recruiting a ton, and, and that is the storyline, but, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is they have to win this year in order to maintain this class in order to kind of keep this momentum building so that when these guys do arrive, you know, a lot of them in January, 
how you're able to continue to kind of try to build on the success that you have this year. Grayson, they have uh, two four-star running backs uh, in the class now, um, which, you know, people would go, oh, well, well that's not going to be enough. But this offense also, in, in regards to that position, you know, you could easily have two guys that are at 1,000 yards or close to it. Definitely, and, and I think that when you look at Caden Knighton and Michael Turner Jr., you see two guys that are very different than the guys that they have on their roster. And that's not necessarily a knock on the guys on their roster, but it's just a different level of whether it's speed or home run hitting ability or, you know, for Michael Turner, he has a lot of wiggle, ability to make guys miss in the open field, ability to break tackles. Um, definitely something that you need in the inside zone scheme. And then with Cade Knighton, I mean, that guy, I mean, he's a track star. He's so fast and he's only getting better. Um, it's kind of been that way for a while. You know, I, I think, I posted this, I tweeted this, you know, I think this is the best running back duo as far as Tomisco in one single class that Baylor's ever had. I, I'm not even sure that it's close. Um, so it kind of speaks to, um, you know, not only kind of what they're trying to build on offensively, but it also speaks to, you know, how good Keenan Hall has been on the recruiting trail for him to go, come into Baylor and really say, you know, I'm going to make an impact. And he's doing it at multiple positions, but obviously as, 100% gotten the job done at his position, which is running back. That's where I wanted to go next was like, we knew, I think if everybody kept an eye, if you have just like kind of a pulse on the recruiting world, you knew Keenan Hall was an elite recruiter and we knew he was going to have success once he got to Baylor. But are you surprised the level of success that he's been able to have this early on, especially coming off the bad season that they had last year? Right. I, I think that that's kind of, you know, I, I think a lot of people have talked about NIL, and, and NIL is huge. It, it is massive. Like, you have to be able to be competitive in order to land guys. But I think, you know, most people have talked about Keenan Hall, but I do think sometimes it gets a little unnoticed that this is his first year and that he's only, he hasn't even been here for a full year. Um, and the fact that he's come in and just made this kind of impact, because I think he's another piece of the puzzle, right? You know, NIL is one piece of the puzzle bringing in an elite recruiter, which was something that Dave Randa absolutely made a necessity for that running back position. Um, he made that a focal point, and that's exactly what they got with Keenan Hall. So I think those kind of pieces have really fit together nicely. And um, I think it is a little surprising coming off of a 3-9 and nine season, but I also think that when you have guys that have elite relationships, you're able to be competitive with NIL and you have a vision for your program going forward that you've really been able to show to recruit, um, specifically the fact that Baylor's been having young guys play early. Um, I think those type of things really resonate with prospects. And also, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, they're committed, they're not signed. And so if this season goes badly, which I think, you know, recruits and commits are very aware of the simple fact that if this season goes bad, then the staff might not be there. Um, you know, these guys know that. And so if the season does go, go bad, then I, I think they feel like they can kind of move in a different direction if need be. So um, Baylor's done a fantastic job, I think, in today's day and age, you know, with players moving, players shuffling, transfer portal, NIL. You know, guys have options all the way up until signing day. So things don't go well. Um, you know, you'd probably see some attrition and, and guys, you know, decommitting, which makes total sense. But if that doesn't happen – um, then Baylor will be building a ton of momentum going into next year. How surprised are you seeing this? I mean, I mean, he's Dave Aranda told us what he told us, but and they've got you know Keenan Hall and and Jake Spavital and all that are all very very good recruiters that are now added to the staff. But given the fact that you know people wouldn't have to look very long to see that Dave Aranda's on the hot seat, that they're getting these kind of guys. Right. And it's interesting because guys bring that up. You know, it's not really a secret that he's on the hot seat and yet they're still willing to commit to Baylor. And again, I think it just speaks to the vision that these guys have. And Dave Brando was very honest with y'all when he talked about the fact that, you know, when guys visited Baylor, they came away loving the program. You know, they love their relationships with the coaches. The families love Baylor. Like there's just a, a ton of things that are positive. But he also said that then at the end of the day, the NIL just didn't stack up against the competition. And so now that they fixed that, I, I just think that those relationships and just the, the culture at Baylor is really winning out right now. 
I think uh, you and Craig touched on this the other day on the BearCast. Um, but, like, I know when we were at Big 12 Media Days, the the sense of change in the mindset, the mannerisms, how they carried themselves, the confidence that everybody had – has gotten me really excited for this season, whereas I really wasn't – I was kind of nervous and apprehensive, didn't really know what to expect coming off of how things have gone the past couple of years. But do you feel a sense of – I don't know if it's relief or confidence or a, a new wave of swagger with this team. And are you more excited uh, for the season to get underway than you were maybe last year? Definitely. Definitely more excited. I, I think last year – um, the unfortunate part was just how wrong the staff was about the team. And so, you know, when that happened, um, it leads to a lot of people being wrong about what happened a year ago. And obviously we saw that, you know, Baylor fell off completely, had a really miserable season. Um, and I, I think what, what kind of just has me, you know, having optimism going into this year is just the simple fact that, you know, when Dave Rand is talking, when the players are talking, when, um, you know, anyone really around the program is talking. A lot of it is about how much things have changed from a year ago and how different the feelings are, the vibe is, how different the mentality is, um, how they focused on kind of getting back that dog mentality that had been lacking the last two years um, once those seniors left from the 2021 team. Um, I think you're really seeing that. And you're seeing the guys that they brought in are guys that um, – culturally are going to add some competition, some fight, um, and just some dogs, I, I think, to this program. And um, they really need to have a different level of physicality than they had a year ago because I think every single coach that was at Big 12 Media Day talked about physicality. Um, and so Baylor's going to have to adjust to that. And, and I think they've done a great job of saying all the right things, adding the necessary pieces from the transfer portal, um, and just honestly focusing on football and, and just really trying to get back to that from the staff to the players. I, I think it really has come together a little bit for um, Baylor going into this year. This is not me predicting that they're winning a Big 12 championship or anything like that, but I will say coming off of Big 12 media days, I have a lot more confidence about them getting back to a bowl game than I did before. Grayson, that last thing, what uh, what's on the horizon? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, you know, I think that you're going to see a little bit more momentum um, from Baylor on the recruiting side of things. Um, they have a junior day coming up at the end of the month, um, I guess next weekend, and the last camp of the, of the year next weekend as well. So a lot of different things there. That's usually for a lot of younger guys. Um, but I do think you could see a little bit more momentum going into fall camp, maybe some guys who flip um, from where they're currently at. Um, if you're interested in finding out that information, you got to join the premium side of things. But I will tell you, you know, Baylor is continuing to build on this momentum. And I think right now it's very important that they do that because they've gained so much momentum going into the season. And if they're able to kind of strike right before the dead period hits, it would be absolutely massive for them to kind of finish off this class before they got to focus completely on the season. Grayson Grudhey for Sikkim365.com. Grayson, thanks a lot. Great stuff. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Grayson Grudhey for, again, if you want to know that information, you got to join the premium section.